is Peter Vanatini, and I'm an editor for the Journal of Neuroimage, Image, and uh, specifically for the section on methods and modeling. And what we're doing is interviewing some people uh, in the field who uh, are here at uh, uh, the Human Brain Mapping meeting and to ask them about what they're doing and, and what their impression of the field is. So I have with me today Bob Turner, who is uh, uh, at the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, and uh, he's starting at the center. Uh, he has a seven Tesla scanner. And, uh, just going to ask him some of the things and questions of the meeting in the field in general. So to begin, uh, so Bob, uh, so what do you think are some of the most interesting uh, presentations here at the meeting? I think it's pretty easy to summarize the, uh, what I think are the most three, the three most important presentations here, the instant um, paper week lectures uh, in regards to where this field is going. And uh, but first of all, I must thank uh, Nikki and Peter for the opportunity of making this but anyway, the three um, crucial paper sessions have been, in my view, the talk on machine learning, um, by Mitchell, um, the, um, uh, the session on um, the connector, which has been um, directed by uh, people like Peter Benison and uh, Patrick Cagman. And uh, we just heard by Kevin Wiggerbell on the benefits of a very high field of high form computing neuroscience. Uh, there's been a number of other uh, presentation posters that I've seen, which I think is also about future applications for the future. But I'll just say about these the particular three presentations is that I foresee that this will result in a paradigm shift in the way that neuroimaging is done. Shift away from the uh, what I call the block culture, the uh, conception of the brain as um, a number of loosely connected fuzzy subdivisions into something which consists of very precise networks um, which um, interact um, in great detail with each other so that any given neuron can be involved in several different tasks. Um, and this is going to be facilitated by um, machine learning techniques in a, in a major way. Um, massively multivariate analysis techniques. What we've had so far is massively univariate uh, techniques by the uh, general and um, simple hypothesis testing. Going beyond that, we've had a gospel number of Bayesian analysis, which allows us at least to say something about how large an observation is, rather than just not zero. Um, but um, going, we have to go way beyond that to, to look at the details of the network. So the point about machine learning and very high field of mind is that the very high field of mind provides us with much, much more detailed information to the benefit of machine learning studies in a very big way. Um, yeah, actually, I, tend, I tend to agree completely with what you're mentioning. And and one thing, uh, uh, to a, a question follow-up to, to that as well, one, one's a high field image. And you have a seven Tesla scanner in your, in your center. And um, uh, I've been trying to actually get a sense of where that's going as far as, I mean, it seems like there's beautiful images of ocular jackets columns, there's beautiful images of orientation columns, uh, there's, there's beautiful images of uh, the high resolution anatomy, and that sort of thing. And, and so there's a lot of potential for decoding. But it seems that the, Applications of um, of actually trying to do more cognitive applications in the other parts of the brain. It seems that that hasn't been coming along yet. And do you, do you see a reason for that, or if that's just simply a matter of momentum? Thanks for raising that question. That gives me the springboard for the next thing I want to say. Um, my Max Planck Institute is actually a human cognitive brain sciences institute, and that's um, the size of the uh, intended to. are intended to um, very directly benefit the uh, work of my colleagues who study cognitive psychology or in our institute. Um, we are conscious that with the quality of the neuroanatomy we get at um, Tesla, um, we should be able to parcelate out a fair number of problem areas on the basis of their mind and structure and their site architecture. And it's a major project to actually uh, make a concordance between the site of architecture problem maps and um, a new minor architecture of the human brain, which I'm working on that project now. Having done that, we will be able to analyze the functional data in the brain, particularly in um, prefrontal and um, premotor and uh, um, uh, temporal lobe areas. We will be able to analyze it on the basis of what is the cortex actually. 
this is a brand plan initiative. This is a, a phase we have to go through. We have to be able to look at the book of conservation in B1. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, so, um, okay, so along the lines of, of uh, other aspects of the MR signal, looking at, uh, it seems like there's a lot of uh, work on functional connectivity. And uh, through, you know, along the lines of anatomy or isolation, it's also sort of related. But what do you think of the efforts of using resting state or, or uh, spontaneous oscillations for looking at functional connectivity? I think the recognition, very related recognition, So, yes, uh, I'm full of hope for the future. I think that there's um, a lot of things we can chase now. Okay, so, so, um, uh, so yeah, so we pretty much covered the, the questions of the machine learning techniques and the computer. So what do, you, what do you think, sort of an open-ended question as well, um, so what do you think the, the highlights of this meeting, it seems like there's always new highlights every single year, and what do you think the highlights of the meeting in 10 years might be? I think that the kind of worms which we're starting to open now is one which will allow us to ask questions as to how does a given area of cortex actually do the job that it does, and what kind of jobs do what do areas of cortex do, what kind of neuronal structure and organization is associated with what kind of transformation it does and how it does. And I think those questions are going to be very big. Let's sometimes approach those. I think we will need to integrate MRI techniques with um, uh, electrophysiological techniques much more closely and we'll be able to understand a much better the relationship between obviously what we call the electrons and uh, scalp electrons. These um, experimental um, developments are moving ahead. I think one other, one, two other deep problems. One is the problem of what do we mean by neuroactivity anyway? Do we mean inhibitory and excitatory? Uh, is it just as important if the dog didn't bark as if the dog did bark? Um, is, that just, is that part of the information content of neuroactivity? The absence of activity or increased activity? We don't know that. So I think that there is a deep more philosophical and more concept for the military That uh, pretty much covers most of my questions. Thank you very much.